Then I wanted to talk about this. This is flipping amazing. This is an article courtesy of the Business Insider, which is absolutely awesome because, funnily enough, I used to work at this company. I used to work at this company that they're featuring and they've legitimately exposed all the things that I kind of knew about in the background but didn't really. But now it's funny to kind of see it kind of happening and it kind of obviously legitimately led to the demise of this company, which is obviously great to see. I'm not going to lie company i'm talking about is pollen so i worked for pollen very briefly very very briefly and again it didn't end well right it didn't end well it's just it did not end well <laughs> yeah it did not end well let's just put that out there it did not end well i got told to f off because i did the bare minimum and i did not care about the job in the slightest and you know i just whatever yeah i wasn't the best employee there let's just say that cool i had my suspicions about pollen and the whole entire company what they did from the minute one because essentially what it was which i didn't know about the kind of the the things happened behind the scenes have when you only sign up to a festival attend an event somewhere and you get given you get sent these emails oh we're 80 percent sold out of this particular package We've got this new package that you can buy. Look who's announced on the lineup. Whatever it may be, right? Referral link gets you this. You know, those, you always thought they were coming from the person that you were, sorry, the event that you were going to. But essentially what they're coming from is like um, these event management companies that do the kind of back-end work for these places. So what they do is that they're the ones sending out the email promotions, the deal promotions, all these sort of things. They're managing the ticket flow, all this sort of nonsense. Whereas on the face of it, it looks like it's coming from Glastonbury or Primavera, but really it's coming from these companies. And you're basically in charge of that. So you would basically get a group of events that you would do, you know, what cream fields, strawberry and something, whatever it may be called. And you'd be responsible for essentially maintaining um, the sales of that event and making sure they hit a certain threshold. And I don't know how they took the profits i'm not sure if it was from the tickets or something but that's how the whole company sort of worked and naturally i think naturally because it was a a, a company that was sort of situated in that kind of events party festival type scene it attracted a certain type of person a person who also liked to attend parties festivals and whatnot and also somebody that probably was a little bit you know outgoing in their sort of uh, temperament and clearly somebody that you know, you would imagine wasn't much of a wallflower. And there was a lot of those personalities in one office, which is simply, I feel like maybe they're not the right mix of people. It's like working in a fashion company. I think that it's one thing to have every, I think if you have everybody in a fashion company that's got a passion for fashion, it can maybe get a little bit toxic very quickly because everybody in there secretly maybe um, envies or despises the founder. They all think they're flipping, you know, Alex, you know, um, Alexander McQueen themselves. They maybe, should, they maybe think that this job is beneath them. I don't know. There was a weird air about everything going on in there. Kind of failed dreams or these dreams that they were chasing while they're doing this job. I don't know. It just seemed strange. That's just me coming from the outside in looking, right? And it's also me, you know, talking it from a real unbiased, rational point of view, even despite my own issues I had with them. Another sort of thing as well that I thought was really strange about the whole entire thing was that it just always felt like it was a rave going on in there. There was always kind of like a party atmosphere. It never felt like there was serious work being done. There was serious work being done, don't get me wrong, because I couldn't do the serious work. That's why they told me to F off. But I still feel like there was always a little bit of a lack of seriousness in the stuff that they did. And maybe that was a cultural thing or whatever they, they were going through. But clearly this article from the Business Insider kind of details a lot of the stuff and kind of does put a bit of credence on the feelings that I had when I initially went there. Non-stop partying, lavish spending, and sexual harassment allegations, um, acquisition, sorry, inside the self-destructive pollen, the music startup once worth $800 million. Look at these two wild lads. Look at them. Look at them. These are, these are the type of people that you go and interview with at these kind of startups, right? And they've got this company. And they, they try and make you feel like you're not cool, which is funny because obviously you're there to get employed, but they try and act like they're cooler than you. It's like, no, you guys aren't cool. You just managed to find a way to get funding to start this company fair enough but just because you go to these events doesn't make you cool doesn't make doesn't you know it's not like a personality trait that's another thing as well people that go to festivals and events and feel like that's their personality you're a dork you're a loser get a personality get some hobbies get some interest but clearly these guys thought a way 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 more of themselves than i did and i never really understood it in, from just the outside point of view it's like you guys aren't cool in the slightest i just want to work here because i want a job i don't necessarily care you know what i mean about like this what you're doing i just want a job but clearly you have to pay the game and act like you do care and all that sort of stuff and you know 
I did a good enough job in that regard. About 400 million Poland employees were camped out in the Mondocito County, California for five straight days of partying in 2019. <laughs> Honestly, man, it was good. life was good pre-pandemic, eh? For five straight days of partying, the UK-based events of travel startup founded by Callum and his brother Liam Niggas Niggas Fancy, right? Let's let's keep a term on that one. Had raised nearly thirty million in venture capital funding, and the brothers wanted to celebrate. They put staffers up in cabins and camp glamping tents, and hosted full-blown festivals with DJs, acrobatic dancers, um, concortionists, and slaves. <laughs> in all, the retreat cost the company five hundred thousand dollars, according to four former employees, attendees, just about every drug under the sun: cocaine, MDMA, acid, mushrooms, ketamine mean it was harder to find not find drugs than it was to find them one former employee said staffers drank so much alcohol that pollen employees had to run out and buy more yes and this was happening during the week this is one of the first places i worked in my entire life where i felt like i was being approved and if you know me personally outside of work right you know i get down i get lit i turn up once i crank up the volume there's no bringing that shit down i'm going all the way up i'm like in a barber shop like you know i'm blaring something and talking to you at the same time i got up i'm noisy so i went there and i legitimately felt like a prude i legitimately felt like a like a lame because i didn't want to partake in the drinking and the going out culture during a week i was already struggling to keep up with the flipping workload as was right i didn't understand what the point of all this was and now who you are offering me drinks and going to the bar and buying or going to the shop around the corner and buying bottles of beer and you know people clearly look like they've done some lines in the toilet i'm like god damn what the hell's going on it's only 2 p.m on a wednesday what's happening here like legit the best thing about that place though that was really fun the office that i worked at, i think it was in that elephant and castle i think around that area is it elephant and castle or Vox? i don't know somewhere in south was that there was a gym that no one used it looked like for the most part. There were some people who used it, don't get me wrong. I think some people in the product team, I think, used. But I didn't really see people work using it when I was using it. It was normally empty. And I'd be going in there on a the bench press, like, you know, every hour or so after doing work, I'd go in there doing it on a bench press. We might explain why I got taught to skin dazzle. But every hour or so, I'd be on a bench press, like, getting some reps in. I'd be on a pull-up bar to get the squat rack, do some overhead presses, do some deadlift, just quickly knock them out. And that was quite fun. I'm not going to lie. We were just to quickly pop into a room and bump out some bench presses and some push-ups and sit because I'm that psycho you know sometimes that like you're if you've been in a workplace sometime and you you know you're walking around your workplace you're having a coffee and you hear someone go <laughs> i'm that guy in the court hallway somewhere doing some push-ups like i don't know why i love doing that sort of shit or some air squat somewhere right <laughs> so if you give me a room where there's that equipment that i can use and kettlebells and stuff i'm gonna take advantage of it so i thought that was pretty sick but i do remember the daily consumption of alcohol and drug taking turned me down a little bit i was like okay i'm gonna turn down a bit there's no turn up for what turn down for something it continues the article one morning a top pollen executive visit the breakfast hall three times in a row telling a bemused underling on the third visit that he'd just woken up <laughs> a staffer described the retreat as a complete debauchery one attendee who did both cocaine and acid at the retreat knock one of the craziest experiences i've ever had in my life that shit was fucking insane a poll representative said the incident with the executive never took place and the company never conducted those narcotics believed it was unacceptable in the work environment lies <laughs> i saw that and more uh, the representative added that they had no complaints from any employees about drugs and company retreat received nine out of ten in our employee satisfaction survey of course it did if you're giving them free coke and md oh the one good thing they had about it actually in the workplace was there was actually always always a good group of like dudes cool dudes hot girls if you're into that sort of thing what else oh the work schedule was the working if i remember correctly it was the first place i remember you could work at you could work from home that that thing that was pretty this was pre-pandemic so if you wanted to work from home you could which wasn't you know um advisable because there was so much like there was so much in there's so much like kind of cross talking like in the moment like oh this stuff is happening you know, there's too much information happening at once so it was kind of always annoying me so you kind of had to be in the office to kind of actually you know get to the core of what needed to be done and kind of get a handle on how to do certain things but it was nice to have that option available especially someone like myself who you know lived far away it was nice to be able to kind of you know mix things up some bit whatnot it may be but apart from that that place was just like turn up for what all the time you know the lunches and you know as soon as the people i felt it felt like to me at first i remember when i was there people would work late often right there'd be a lot of people that wouldn't leave on time and at first i thought oh rah these guys are working hard man like props on you in it especially for me that was struggling to kind of get to grips or everything it was sort of handy to have people around you could rely on and help you know help you out with certain things 
and also have set a good example because you know in workplaces I always say especially someone myself, someone myself who's come from retail I say office life is so much easier than retail because office life you can kill it easily by just showing a little bit of, you know by being a little bit more um by having using using your initiative a little bit being hard working and just you know these little things that you you learn from retail you can apply to the office and you can kind of get promotions really quickly or increase your pay really quickly responsibilities whatever it may be um but one thing i remember seeing which was really interesting was that after a while i noticed people weren't staying late because they wanted to work hard they were staying late because once you stayed late it meant you could get away with a lot more people that were in there were ready to party have a good time and clearly if you stay there until seven or eight there's no you're not going home now are you so you might as well go to the bar and grab a drink you might as well go and do other things like that's what it was basically happening and you see it happening a lot from like wednesday onwards was like people would certainly start to turn up and whatnot and those late nights again would turn into let's work hard into like you know let's party hard which is always hilarious to me but also we're not surprising because like i said the the company is an events company it kind of pushed themselves kind of being you know gen z before gen z it attracted a lot of people who are in a state of arrested development right a lot of kind of 18 going on 30 year olds or 30 year olds going on 18 which is always a bit of em bit embarrassing in that way like clearly you know somebody that only started taking care a couple of years ago and acting like they've been on it since forever and whatnot somebody who just the other day were listening to taylor swift is now into avici and think they're doing something i don't know i i just i just i got the feeling a lot of them were dorks but i also kind of got a lot of feeling that a lot of them kind of clearly enjoyed what they were doing and felt a lot of kind of camaraderie with their brothers and sisters working with and felt like it was a good damn time but i saw through it all and thought it was a bit lame maybe that's what maybe turned maybe why i kind of turned off to it and it kind of led to the bitter end it led to but i find this all fascinating regardless three years later Pol pa Poland's parent company street team software limited went bankrupt about 430 employees were let go without their final paychecks <laughs> as of july 20th this year Poland and its subsidiaries owed customers 8 million in refunds according to the internal spreadsheet obtained by inside <laughs> from outside Poland's collapse was a shock when the niggas when the niggas niggas fancy brothers niggas um, Callum 32 and Liam 29 founded a company originally called Verve. That's when I used to work with them. It was called that in 2014. Um, I think it's now, yeah, it was Verve and then it's all under Pollen. The brothers saw the lightning success thanks to their curated experiences, which packaged music festivals with stays at luxury hotels. In seven years, Pollen raised more than $200 million from venture capitalists and worked with some of the biggest names in music, including Justin Bieber, 50 Cent, and Scooter Braun. You see Justin there. Um, but according to 31 former employees who spoke with Insider, the company's implosion was years in the making. Any one of you that spoke to the journalists out there, you guys are knobs. Never speak to journalists, man. Never, ever, ever, ever. Unless they're offering you money, and even then, never speak to journalists. But hey, do what you have to do. Making said brothers ran pollen a little much uh, a little too much like they ran their festivals the drugs were often present heavy drinking and partying seemed to be part of the job description the company culture facilitated questionable behavior some stuff was said yeah i saw that questionable behavior several people employees listed sexual harassment as one of the concerns of pollen oh really everybody drinking during the day and doing drugs during the day during the week would lead to some unfortunate instances with the opposite sex who would have thought one woman told insider that liam touched her butt inappropriately yo another woman who said uh, was paid a settlement by pollen after outlining a complaint of sexual harassment by callum holy smokes dozens of expense reports viewed by insider showed lavish spending with the brothers included fifty-two thousand on a luxury villa in ibiza okay for sure they they weren't using that to flip in you know to buy fucking agave bowls and whatnot, right? Uh, the dash, their, their rash decision making could lead to chaos. In January 2022, fans of customers flew to Playa de Carmen, Mexico, for a massive techno festival called Departure, while COVID 2019, sorry, COVID 19 numbers were rising in the region. After the Mexican government issued a 50% capacity cap on the mass events, including concerts, Poland abruptly cancelled the event. Um, some customers told Insider they still hadn't been refunded as of November. As the buzz around Pollen intensifies and Negus Fancy Brothers wanted to move faster, make events bigger and take more risks, they saw an opportunity to not only change the way people experience the entertainment industry, 
but to join the ranks of tech elite. Investors came flocking, cash poured in, and they adopted the persona of high-flying, high-rolling executives, but in the startup world, faking it until you make it have disastrous results. Um, yeah, not really. Sometimes it works out well for you, honestly. I've seen it too often in these startups. Sometimes you fake it till you make it, and then you get the funding, and then you sell the product that you are making, and then you bounce on to do something else. That's not a failure to me, mate. You're up in that respect because you've invested a small amount, you cashed out with a big amount, and now you've got a win on your CV. I used to think that they didn't understand the risk that they were blindly optimistic, but now I think they were just liars. Said one former employee, oh, really? You just realized that they were lies now. I'm not really sure when the tables turned, but it's kind of disgusting how they treated people. Uh, they dropped out of Poland University. People would joke, Callum could squeeze money out of a rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, see what I told you about people that do IV drips after their party. I'm telling you, this, these, these niggas were sharing this stuff on their own social media platforms, brother. Their own social media platforms. They're sharing pictures of them taking IV drips on flipping resorts during work holidays and whatnot. Are you absolutely dumb? Come on, man. Um, says, yeah, yeah. Callum was the face of Poland. With his boyish looks and bow cut, he was a smooth talker who didn't own a suit and could charm the most skeptical of investors. One employee said they were brought on, brought to tears by an email he wrote about his passion for pollen. <laughs> you see what I mean about having people in your office that are all passionate about something? It leads to absolute dog shit, honestly. Passion for fashion, passion for design, passion for sneakers, passion for whatever. If you have too many passionate people that work in one place, it can always, it's always into disaster. You shouldn't have to have just workers, people who just don't give a shit about events. They don't go out themselves. They're boring. They just, they don't care and they just do the work. That's what you need. Absolute ninjas, absolute soldiers on the front line. Not people that secretly want to be, you know, um, Carl Cox themselves. They secretly want to own a print works themselves. They secretly want to be the Martinez brothers. They secretly want to be Nina Kravitz and flipping Amelie Lenz. Nah, you need people in there that just want to work. And these people, look at them. They're crying over a fucking email. These people are people probably the same people that were crying behind Fred again when he was playing at Boiler Room. Like, get a life, man. Grow up. Flipping hell. Anyway, he greeted people with a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Definitely didn't kiss me. People will joke that Callum would squeeze money out of a rock. Another former employee said, long-time employee said, Callum's lack of formal education was what initially attracted the pollen. Yeah, well, it looks... See, all the dummies and the passionates all go there, innit? Yeah, it makes sense. Meanwhile, another Poland staffer said that despite working there for months, he never saw Liam's face. Many ex employees said that they had was known to keep his cam keep his camera off during in meetings. Um Liam was moody and unpredictable, sometimes snapping at staffers out of nowhere. As chief revenue officer, he brokered deals with artists and revenue. Da -da. Um, according to one former employee, Liam also used Poland's corporate card to fund a number of personal expenses, including IV drips for hangovers. Free employees said, of course he did. Look how dumb this. Look at this. Look at this. And, and I say look at this because it's a picture of Liam um, on the couch with these young ladies applying an IV drip to him during a hangover, I'm assuming. As COVID-19 locked lifted, the Cooped Up College Students Festival uh, lovers flocked to Poland's events. In 2021, the company saw a 13 300% increase. Whoa. Investors took note in April 2022, four months before joining, going broke. Four months before they went broke. Four months. Poland has secured $150 million in Series C funding from backers including Kindred, North Zone, Siena Capital, Slingshot and a company to an $800 million valuation. So they're on the brink of being valued at a billion dollars. This nonsense company that just sent you fucking emails and annoying spam text messages telling you a festival was 90% sold out when it hadn't sold one ticket, selling you dumb packages that you didn't need, right? Huh? They were nearly listed as a $1 billion company while the founders were there sniffing coke off of strippers' backs, inappropriately touching staff members, staff members drinking all the way throughout the entire week, some of them probably functional alcoholics, right? And they were nearly valued at a billion dollars. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible out there. If you put your mind to anything, you can achieve it too. If these two absolute dullards were able to comp create a company that employed my dumbass and your dumbass out there, then clearly <laughs> we're missing out on something. Holy shiz. 
while Silicon Valley um, investors might have been too jaded by the WeWorks of the world to throw cash at another pair of party boy founders, the UK tech scene was never was newer, sorry, smaller and more willing to take risk on entrepreneurs like Callum and Liam, according to Rob Kinners, a partner at the Hoxton Ventures, a top early stage venture capital firm in London. Hoxton Ventures. You deserve to lose your money. Hoxton fucking ventures. What you're investing in? Food trucks, ghost kitchens. How revolutionary. Some of these investors considered hard partying behavior like Callum's and Liam's to be part of the package. Yeah, of course. Rockstar founders, isn't it? I hope next year, similar to what I said before in a pod, I hope next year, I hope this year, sorry, this is the year of not believing people. Number one, people just come out and say stuff. Just don't believe them. Don't believe them. Wait until there's more evidence to the story, right? Or wait until you hear more. Just don't believe people straight away when they say things. And also, I hope this is the year where we get back to like having actual experts do things, right? People that actually demonstrate skill, talent, um, understanding, acumen, um, rational thinking, insight, right? Foresight. Let's go back to that. So just taking a chance on somebody because you like the cut of their jib or because they were from the same place you were from or because they speak a certain way or because they wear hoodies or because they're coming to the office barefooted. No, 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 no. Let's just go back to actually having people that are absolutely competent in what they do first. Can we do that, please? Uh, back to one of the Poland's early stage investors is known to throw massive parties and fly around at be fun weekend so the niggas fancy brothers antics probably didn't initially raise red flags honestly the, the, the fact that their name is niggas fancy is <laughs> <flipping them. laughs> niggas fancy oh god Poland's profile grew Callum started connect cognitive hypnotherapy to help him become a better leader I wanted to be liked he told Forbes but also I wanted to be able to do the right thing for the company Callum made Poland's career free sorry carefree culture a priority one former employee recalled being whisked away from the day long scavenger hunt during their second week on the job I just remember getting to the office at 10am and taking shots and it's like Tuesday whoa so maybe, maybe this actually shows me in a bad light, right? The fact that they were being so carefree and everything and I still couldn't ingratiate myself in it maybe shows me in a bad light. Maybe I'm the problem in this regard, right? Because there's this, there's this incredible party atmosphere which eventually it feels like a hostel. That's what it, it felt like a hostel. Imagine, you, you know when you go to a hostel and like you're over it after the first three or four days? That's what it felt like working there all the time. It was like being in a hostel. Like, everyone's in your business. Everyone's on top of you. There's all these stimuli coming at you that you can't really focus on properly. Um, there's these weird conversations with people that you're having where, is it actually a conversation? Are you just, like, wasting time talking to me because you don't, I'm just in front of you? Like, work that you've been given, is this necessary? Do we need to do this? What's the point? Like, all these weird things are coming at you all at once, and it's kind of hard to kind of keep a grip on them, right? And to kind of understand what's kind of going on. But it did feel very hostily, very hostily. Especially when you think about the girls that are walking through, right? You see, oh, that person's good. Oh, that person's hot. That person. It's just like it was okay, cool. Hustle vibes. The guy had sketch, 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 sketch. Oh, yeah, madness. Another staffer who was twenty when she was hired at Poland's Los Angeles office said that she was served mimosas on her first day at work. I would describe it as a frat, but a job. And at twenty, that was great because I was like, oh my gosh, first job out of college is just a party. <laughs> <laughs> look at this to make it better a poll representative said alcohol was only served to employees of a legal drinking age oh that makes it much better isn't it at Poland retreats employees participated in speed dating game in which staffers sat in a circle answering other questions from prompt cards including some were sexually explicit of course promoted the <laughs> pro quote to free employees <laughs> ah, honestly you're playing these speed dating games right B but but flipping Let's uh let's attack somebody if they dare to say that they like somebody in the office from just a purely you know admi admiration point of view. Oh my god, that person actually looked quite hot. I would actually like to like, imagine dare somebody say that and approach it in a very respectful manner. But hey, let's have let's promote the speed dating. Let's do that. Let's promote speed dating and all that sort of malarkey. Of course, makes complete sense. Further participants holding the cards at 2017 resort show questions, including of people in this room. Who do you think is most likely to sleep with three other people in this room? Would you rather be a virgin forever, have sex with a sibling one time and break the curse? Yo, that's a mad question. Would you rather be a virgin forever or have sex with your sibling one time to break the curse? <laughs> Number one, the fact that you think virginity is a curse is an issue. <laughs> and the fact that it has to be your sibling to break it is also very much problematic. But anyway, we move. 
Our participation was not mandatory. One employee said that she left as she had to partake in the game, even though the question made her feel uncomfortable. If you don't engage with it or laugh about it, then you were seen as not fun and not getting involved. Beep, beep, beep. I didn't really go out to any of the drinks. I didn't really go out to any of the afters, really, to be honest. And I think, apart from my lack of working, right, my, my, um, my general inability to do the work that was necessary, I think that was maybe the main problem. I have to be honest, like my lack of ingratiating myself in that group, because I legitimately didn't find it cool. Like I came in there being somebody who had my own history, had my own life outside of it, that I clearly got up to loads of sort of mad stuff. And I mean, I'm like, I want to work, isn't it? Like, why, are you, why, why have we turned this into like a, like a student halls? Like, what is this? And most of you guys are way too old for this. Like, why are you acting like your first, this is your first job out of college? Some of you guys have children, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's some self respect. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then there were company hosted employee lockings. Yep. I, I know about that one. That took place in venues including karaoke bars and roller rinks. While the monthly gatherings were billed as a team bonding activity, one former employee said they were an excuse to get completely obliterated. Um, Callum Liam and sometimes took the party too far. Multiple former employees said during their parties at private Los Angeles residence, cocaine was often present. Super said this is like the issues are categorically untrue. <laughs> Uh, look man i'm not i'm not gonna snitch on certain people but god let's just say i have i have my own theories at one september 2018 looking at los angeles office callum hosted a female employee into his shoulders making her feel unsafe she told the insider the poor sister said that the while the calendar didn't record this when employees celebrated big wins they hugged each other and high-fived um, one month prior during a lock-in that started at the angel city brewery in downtown los angeles four employees uh, saw callum pour whiskey into employees drinks without asking <sighs> including that of a 10 year old staff and one employee told this side that she was scared to look into away from a drink out of fear callum would add alcohol to it <laughs> imagine your boss trying to get you wasted so you can fuck out <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't doing that to her lads. Luckily, luckily. But oh my God, I'm so happy, man. That place was a pile of shit. And I'm glad <laughs> they told me to fuck up because I hated it for the moment I was there. So it's good to see that it was a pile of absolute horse shit. I'm not going to read the entire thing. I don't want to bore you. But honestly, the satisfaction I read listening to all this stuff and, you know, hearing about them securing the funding and then hearing them flipping blow it all away and the employees crying and complaining about it they were acting like they had the college and best job in the world is absolutely satisfying to see there were some cool people there that i felt bad for because you lost your jobs and whatnot fair enough cool it is what it is but still for most of you <laughs> that's what you get in it that's what you fucking get absolute bullshit but hey <laughs> what do i know <laughs> Oh, honestly, it makes me legitimately laugh when I see stuff like that. It makes me legitimately laugh. I cannot lie. I cannot.